What's up guys, Highway from Game Leap here, and in this video I'm going to be covering the 8 biggest mistakes I see people make that will hold you back. Before we get started, we are releasing our website this month. If you want it half off, you can go to this link here and pre-order your membership. We'll be going over much more in-depth and complex topics in there, as well as giving a clear step-by-step -step guide on how to improve quickly. Alright, and without further ado, let's get started. First on our list of mistakes is, number 1, bad target focus. This is something that happens at literally every ELO. Even at masters and low gm how many fights can you think of where you were up multiple picks and you still lose the major connecting bit for 99 percent of those fights is that the right people didn't die first overwatch characters generally either get a lot of value from specific stages or times in a fight it's important for you to know who is impactful at what stages of a fight so that you know who to focus for early fights think of lucio or monkey who use their cooldowns to clear a bunch of space and then have only okay damage or heals to follow up then you have characters who get most of their value towards the end of a fight or during cleanup such as Genji and Tracer who use their mobility and quote unquote lower damage to pick off the weakened targets. Note that I only say lower damage in quotes because if you're a really good Tracer or a really good Genji your damage can be comparable. Finally you have the more consistent value characters that are going to end up getting their value throughout an entire fight such as Widowmaker, Zarya, or most of the healers. If you're in the middle of a fight and you see a Widowmaker taking a super aggressive angle that is the character you need to focus, not their Winston or even the 1 HP Lucio no matter how out of position they seem. Even if you do manage to get a kill on that Lucio, that Widowmaker has a big chance of trading that pick and more if she isn't focused quickly. Even on support, your damage focus is really important, especially when you're deciding what enemy you're going to be using your cooldowns on. So be sure to always keep track of what the largest threats on the enemy team are and try to put pressure on them instead of what is closest or simply on your screen. Alrighty, mistake number two, and this is one that I have given to everybody that I coach and I have always made sure to drill this one in. Do not make excuses for your deaths or losses instead of learning from them. How many times have you lost a game and shot it up to there being a gap or a difference in one of the roles? Sure, it can feel pretty good to shift the blame off of yourself and onto someone else, but ultimately it doesn't do much in the way of learning how to handle that in the future. You should always try to come up with a way that you could have tried winning that game differently, even if it seems impossible. This will help you start carrying games harder since you end up having a lot of tools in your kit for when you feel as though you're down a healer, or when you realize your tank is starting to lose his matchup and you have to even the playing field, or when your widow can't hit the broadside of a barn. Alrighty, that's mistake number two, and by the way, if you're enjoying the video, please be sure to like and subscribe for more stellar overwatch 2 content thank you and let's get back to the list mistake number three picking characters that are good in a situation even if you aren't good at those characters okay this is a really bad one you may have some great game sense and know exactly what pick will counter the enemy team however execution in overwatch 2 is extremely important and if you're constantly ending up on heroes that you don't know how to play you can end up being more of a hindrance than a help it's generally best to stick to your hero pool and make sure that you have game plans for the weaknesses in that pool or be sure to learn a variety of heroes that cover the floor of each other. For example, if you're a Zen main, learning to play Lucio or Mora will give you a more fast-paced character that is less prone to divers. But either way, you should avoid the characters that are super foreign to you when you are trying to rank up. Mistake number four, not warming up before queuing ranked. Every pro has a warm-up strategy, every one of them. But far too often do I see people just launch up Overwatch after a long day of work or school and start hitting the queues right away. Warm-up routines are really important for entering a low-stress environment to build some confidence and get your mind working on gaming and landing shots. Your warm-ups don't even need to necessarily be super complex or super long, but taking even just 5-10 to 10 minutes to flick shots some training range bots can be a huge help. Try to find a routine that fits your aim style and hero requirements and be consistent with it. I've found that having one steady routine I can always do helps me greatly to get in the zone. Number 5 tilt queuing. Man oh man, every Overwatch player knows this one. You just got hit with a few horrible losses and you're in a bad mood for a totally new game, but you instantly requeue anyway. This will absolutely tank your performance and make you play worse than your usual self. Your breaks don't necessarily need to be super long, but if you're feeling the weight and pressure of losing a bunch of games, then you absolutely should take a break for yourself and do something simple that you enjoy. Watch an episode of a show or get some food, anything to bring that heightened state down so that you can focus and be as objective as possible in your next game. I've also found that it's way harder to tilt queue when you're playing with a friend you enjoy being around, so don't be afraid to duo in order to avoid this exact situation. Learn to pick up on when you're really tilted and don't be afraid to take that break. Mistake number six, stagnating. Odds are if you're here and you're watching this kind of content, you're actively trying to learn. Something I've noticed, however, especially once people get into Diamond or Masters, is that they start to associate time played with skill gains. This is not the case. I've seen plenty of people who are max level with thousands of hours 
performers not improving and being completely stuck in their rank, and I've seen people make it in the top 500 with under 1,000 hours. The difference is almost always going to come down to your mentality. Making sure you are always trying to figure out what you do poorly and trying to find ways to rectify it will ensure that you are constantly on an upwards trajectory. Try to avoid frequently autopiloting and ranked and treat each game like it's a test of your game sense. All right, big mistake number seven, not tracking the kill feed. This one is particularly common in the ranks from bronze to diamond. The kill feed gives you extremely important information in ranked, especially when a lot of the time your team is going to end up being quiet. Not everyone has one or wishes to even use a microphone, so there's a lot of games where you get people who just don't call their picks or their deaths. The kill feed is obviously going to tell you which characters are dead, so you can use that to your advantage on how you play the fight. For example, without even needing one call out, you can see that your Widowmaker picks their main healer and then you can play more aggressively knowing that their team is not going to get as many heals for the fight. Having this information clues you into knowing that as long as you're doing a lot of damage, you're going to be able to win over time. The kill feed also tells you which team has an overall pick advantage. I often call numbers to my team every time there's an update on the kill feed, especially when I'm coming back from spawn as there's a fight going on. This not only helps myself and my teammates know when fights are winnable, but it also will end up giving people a lot of confidence when they know that they're up a pick, and even if they're low on HP, they can come back with health and they can actually push. Okay, the eighth and final mistake on my list that I've noticed a lot at low ranks and it's super deadly, staggering. Whenever you respawn, it can be very tempting to just hurry up and get back into the fight or to go in when you think it's possible to make a solo play. You should ask yourself before walking in every single time if it's better to just wait and make sure you are fighting with the highest win rate possible. Every character on your team is a cog in a machine and not understanding your role or theirs can lead to you making choices like going in solo or going in before your team is actually ready to help you. Make sure as often as possible you are fighting as a unit. That way, even if you aren't particularly confident in your teammates abilities, you can at least use them as a meat shield to get more value from yourself. You might have games where your teammates are not living up to your expectations, but even someone who is completely horrible at the game can walk in and use their health pool by taking damage. Even though this is absolutely not optimal, it's much easier to carry when the enemy team is putting all their damage into your friends instead of you. So be sure to use those meat shields. Also, you obviously want to make sure you're not doing these mistakes yourself, but some of these mistakes you can actually look out for on the other team and use to your advantage if you notice them. For example, with mistake number three, which was picking characters that are good for a situation, even if you're not good at them, if you notice that a pick you made is forcing an enemy onto a character that they're not good at, keep picking that character because now you've essentially gotten a free pick every fight. Or if you notice a team is very bad at staggering, just make sure you constantly push and go for that little extra damage or go for a pick every single time. You can even kind of walk into their spawn a little bit a lot of the time and continue to keep the picks rolling, that way they're always staggered. In any case, we've come to the end of this mistake list. I hope you guys have learned something from this and enjoyed. Once again, please be sure to like and subscribe and make sure you go and check out that website of ours that is coming out this month. Again, pre-orders get 50% off of their memberships. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Coach Highway. Take care and peace.